Good morning. Uh, Tom Belote here uh, in my office on a drizzly Thursday afternoon, uh, December 20th. And uh, I want to talk a little bit about um, what's coming up on church uh, at church this Sunday. Um, and I want to do a little start with a little reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Um, in Matthew, right after uh, the the three wise men leave, um, we hear this. An angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for this child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night, and went to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. When I was 19, I was in college studying religion, and I uh, was, had this professor of Christianity who was just inspiring to me. Um, and his area of specialty was um, ancient Christianity, but the, but the heresies of, of ancient Christianity, the Gnostics um, and a lot of the, the Christian uh, traditions that, that did not make it into the canonical Bible. And he was inspiring, and, and he inspired me. I wanted to, to learn about this. And um, so when I was 19, I spent a very heady six months teaching myself the language of Coptic, um, which is a, a, a dead language not used anymore, um, but was the language of these ancient Christian heresies. I still have my uh, textbook, the words are backwards there, but uh, I still have my textbook of learning Coptic. And I spent about 500, 600 hours attempting to teach myself this language. And then uh, the payoff at the end was that I um, went to London um, and went to the British Museum and Library in London and spent a week, um, was invited to access their ancient documents and spent um, about a, a week um, in the library requesting and reading and experiencing these ancient texts written in Coptic from 200, 300 AD. So if you've ever held an a ancient parchment um, with the stories of, of Jesus and the stories of, of faith from 200 uh, A.D. from you know, 1700, 1800 years ago. That was something. And I bring this all this up um, because back in, uh, back in the fall, our music director, Glenn Merbach, uh, came and, and met with me. And our conversation that day was about what we should do, what, what, what he should do as this year's Christmas pageant. And Glenn was, was really interested in um, talking about the, the current refugee uh, crisis, migrant uh, crisis, the migrants fleeing Central America and, and Mexico and, and heading north. And uh, he wanted to uh, write about Jesus the refugee. And that sparked something in me. And I said, you know, Glenn, there are all of these stories um, from ancient Christianity that contain stories of Jesus's childhood, these, these gospels that were never made it into the canon, that were excluded from the canon, but these, these gospels that talk all about Jesus's childhood, including Jesus's experience and Jesus's family's experience in Egypt as a asylum seeker, as a refugee. Uh, these are texts like the Infancy Gospel of James, the Infancy Gospel of Thomas, Pseudo-Matthew, um, 
And these texts contain just these wonderful and fantastic and just wild stories um, about Jesus's childhood. And the stories, they're, they're, um, they're wild. They contain miracles. They contain magic. Um, some of them contain dragons. And they're also really beautiful because they they humanize this child in the in the four canonical gospels Matthew Mark Luke and John we know absolutely nothing about Jesus's childhood they are absolutely silent about Jesus's childhood except to say that after he's born as an infant his family flees to Egypt and that upon the death of King Herod they return uh, to Nazareth to Galilee and so Glenn um, went and, and read some of these stories and wrote an absolutely amazing pageant um, that starts, most pageants end with the nativity, end with the birth of Jesus. This pageant begins with the nativity, begins with Jesus being born, begins uh, with the wise men visiting. And then it goes from there into the family's flight from Bethlehem to Egypt, um, and it goes into the experiences, experiences that the Holy Family has in Egypt. Um, it's, a, it's a spectacular original pageant, and it's one that I'm looking forward to seeing, and, and I'm so glad that we're able to offer it as a church this uh, Sunday. December 23rd, 9.15 and 11 o'clock. The, the children have put in a ton of work. Glenn has been wonderful with his creation of it. And so um, the, the brilliance of this pageant and, and the wonderfulness of it are really uh, two things. One, um, the stories that about Jesus' childhood that are contained in there, um, these are actually ancient stories. They're not part of the, of the stories that are, are familiar to people nowadays or to most people, but these were religious stories from uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years ago that, that people told about Jesus's childhood uh, you know, in 200, 300, 400 AD. But then there's also um, another level of the pageant as well. And perhaps the much more relevant today um, much more relevant topic, which is this story of a family of migrants, a family of refugees, a family of asylum seekers who leave the land that they're from, leave the land that they know, and they travel uh, to a foreign land do not know what they're going to find there, and um, attempt to uh, make a go of it. They're not fleeing um, out of, uh, it's not, not, a, not fleeing lightly. They're fleeing violence, they're fleeing political instability, and the, the question is whether Joseph and Mary and the infant Jesus will, what will they encounter in Egypt? And so um, in our pageant this Sunday, we're going to have the, the childhood of Jesus, and we're going to have this story of what it is, what it is that this family encounters. I encourage you to, encourage you to come. I'm looking forward to it, and uh, thanks, for, uh, thanks for checking in.